Hello, here's yet another drawing of Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean. And this one is a larger portrait, focusing mostly on his face. As usual, I mostly used a charcoal pencil, and I'm going to be showing you how I did it. So let's get to it. When I started experimenting with other pencils, uh, one of the first things I tried was just drawing with a single black colored pencil because I kind of got tired of some of the disadvantages of graphite pencils. And for a while I just used a black colored pencil, then a charcoal pencil, and then I just decided to combine all these three types of pencils to get the desired results. So you can see me now using a graphite pencil for sketching, although in some of my other drawings you can see that I still use a graphite pencil for shading some of the lighter areas. But the initial sketch is almost always done with a graphite pencil, usually a Stadler HB graphite pencil or something even harder like a 2H pencil. It depends. And then I start working with charcoal. Now I can use a charcoal pencil, which I'm doing now, on his hair. Or I can just uh, use the charcoal dust that I get from sharpening my charcoal pencils and apply that with brushes. You can see that I started doing that in the corner. And I can also use the dust from the pencil work that I did and spread that around as well. But now, I, now you can see that I'm using both the brushes and the dotillions to soften and spread that charcoal around in the corner because I'm gonna shade the background lightly with some uh, varied tones, darker tones but the portrait it's, itself is going to be relatively dark and it's going to have um, a lot of contrast. It's going to be a slightly larger portrait, larger than usual, because I've been drawing the slightly different kinds of drawings lately, so I wanted to do a, a larger portrait, a more detailed one. Uh, Johnny Depp has a very unusual hairstyle as Captain Jack Sparrow so I'm trying to tackle that here I'm not really sure what's going on there on the top of his head but I'm just trying to imitate his hairstyle as best as I can <coughs> And one of the advantages of charcoal pencils is that you can work really fast when you're drawing dark hair. And I made a separate video about that as well. So all you have to do is apply these lines, draw these lines, and then just go over it with a stiff brish bristle brush. And after that maybe you can pull some highlights and you got yourself dark hair. So now I used a uh, tutelion to blend a little bit of the background, but I wanted a, an edge there. That's why I used the tutelion because it gave me a little more precision. And the rest of it I can just uh, do with charcoal dust and with a brush, a large brush here. I'm just spreading that charcoal around and shading that background. The background is going to be very soft uh, with some darker tones, nothing special, no details on it. And of course he's wearing a headband uh, and he, ha he has all kinds of braids and trinkets in his hair so I can't even make out all of that in my reference photo. I'm just going to try to 
draw what I see and uh, simplify the rest. It's all kinds of beads and trinkets and stuff. I don't even know what those are. Uh, whoever came up with a costume for Jack Sparrow obviously put a lot of thought into it. But the good thing about charcoal is that it makes everything a little bit faster because you can just block in these darker areas and then go back later and add some detail. You can see that I mostly used brushes for blending in this video but tortillions are needed as well sometimes and I also use my fingers in certain areas so there's no reason to limit yourself to just one blending method or just one blending tool you should use whatever is available to you and you can see that I also I chose not to restrict myself when it comes to pencils either because even though most of it will be done with charcoal pencils I have no problem using black colored pencil and a graphite pencil as well. But you have to know the properties of your pencils and you have to know uh, which of them can do what and how they can be combined and once you get to know that, once you practice and uh, learn how these tools work, uh, you can actually combine them pretty well and produce some nice looking artwork. So you can see that I use my pencil eraser to pull some highlights on the hair on the top of his head. And now I'm moving on to the scarf. The scarf itself has some details on it, which I also can't really make out, but I'm just going to try to imitate its texture and pattern. And again, some more beads and trinkets on the scarf as well. And there's also some kind of a coin or something hanging there or, or a medallion of some sort. I'm not really sure what that is. And the hand, uh, the scarf itself or the band, whatever it is, has a lot of folds. So the way I approached this was to uh, lay down some of the darker areas first where the folds will be and then put some uh, charcoal on top to establish some tones and then uh, blend that with a brush and the reason why it's better to do this with a brush rather than a tutelion is because the brush uh, pushes the uh, if you're using a stiff brush like I'm using it uh, the brush pushes that charcoal into the paper and it just leaves some of those lines, it leaves some of that texture and you can always uh, go over it with a tortillion and remove the texture where you don't like it because the tortillion tends to blend more thoroughly than a brush but the brush just produces different kinds of effects and you can also see that I'm using a little bit of vine charcoal as well. Vine charcoal is softer and I can use it to for some of these lighter tones and it can also be moved around more easily and uh, you can draw highlights on it a little bit easier. So I need to sharpen my uh, charcoal pencil and work on these details a little bit more so that they stand out and so that their edges are cleaner I also need to add some detail to them and um, and some highlights because there are some shiny shiny bits there, shiny details and then I can move on with the uh, with the headscarf so 
So once again, when it comes to my materials, uh, like I said, I'm mostly using a charcoal pencil, or rather a couple of charcoal pencils. Uh, I usually use woodless charcoal pencils nowadays, although sometimes I use just regular charcoal pencils. And I tend to use one soft charcoal pencil and one medium charcoal pencil. And I tend to do most of the work with a medium charcoal pencil. And now I'm working on this medallion or coin, whatever it is. So in addition to those charcoal pencils, I also tend to add a little bit of vine charcoal here and there. Vine charcoal can be useful for shading lighter areas and sometimes for shading faces and stuff like that. And it can be moved around more easily and also it can be erased more easily. But later you'll see me using a lot more of the black colored pencil which in my opinion combines really well with charcoal or rather on top of charcoal and it can help you create some additional detail and textures that you otherwise would struggle to create using just a charcoal pencil. I'm drawing his uh, right eye and he's wearing a lot of makeup so it's kind of difficult to tell uh, the exact shape of the eye so I just have to stick to the reference photo and draw what I see now I'm using charcoal, uh, vine charcoal to add a little bit of tone to that face but I'm going to be shading it more a little bit later I found that the right side of the headband is a lot lighter so I'm going to add more charcoal to that and make it darker and then I, can, then I can go back in and uh, pull highlights with my eraser as usual And because you're because I'm trying to create a realistic looking portrait, obviously all of the details need to be shaded well, uh, and that goes for this scarf head scarf as well. So I need to shade these uh, folds and make them stand out. so that they look a little more 3D and the edge here needs to be clean as that's why I grabbed a black color pencil and I'm just gonna blend that in and clean it up with an eraser a little bit additionally and maybe use the eraser to pull some highlights Keeping in mind that my light source is coming from above and a little bit more from the right side. I decided to make a slightly longer video of this. I don't know if I'll be making a time lapse video. Sometimes I'm not sure whether to make uh, either the time lapse video or a narrated video. People who uh, like to draw themselves probably prefer narrated videos, but people who watch these videos casually or are just interested in the movie characters or just want to see something entertaining, they probably, probably prefer time lapses. And I don't know if I should create both for each and every one of my drawings. That would probably be a little bit repetitive for some people. But I wanted to create a longer video out of this. Because it's uh, a larger portrait and it's more detailed and probably more th things to talk about. 
Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow is one of my favorite movie characters, though I don't really watch movies that much anymore, honestly, I find it difficult to find anything I like, and it's been so for years. Now I'm using a Tortillion to make some suggestions of some of the facial features. I do that when I want to approach um, drawing facial features a little bit tentatively without putting down a charcoal pencil. And now I'm just going to add some more darker tones here to the left, in the left lower, lower left corner. And maybe add some details later. But the thing is that he his hair is very complicated. It has a lot of these ornaments and these uh, braids and stuff. So I can't even make out all of it in my reference photo. It's mostly dark. So I'm just going to uh, go create a darker area first and then maybe improvise a little bit and try to add some detail. Now shading the neck. I'm using a combination of charcoal pencil and uh, vine charcoal. And you can see me blending with my finger here. Each and every one of these tools, including your finger, blends in a different way you achieve a slightly different effect. Your fingers lack precision, but they are good to blend large areas very quickly and um, they really push the charcoal into the paper and can make, help you create some dark areas while blending. While some other blending tools tend to uh, make everything a little bit lighter. And now I drew his mustache and uh, goatee and I'm blending them with a brush to give them a little more density and volume. Again, vine charcoal for shading the face and then I just spread it around with a softer brush. When working with charcoal there are stages here when it really does look like a mess and some people definitely wouldn't like this medium but it works for me most of the time occasionally I can just use a little bit of charcoal dust and put it down and spread it with a brush to make certain areas a little bit darker rather than just trying to shade with my pencils or blending tools. And I'm just using a charcoal pencil to uh, refine the, the area around the eyes a little bit more make it a little bit darker. When you blend these larger areas of, with, of charcoal, uh, some of them get a little bit lighter and duller. They lose uh, they lose a little bit of that value and um, become more matte rather than black. So occasionally you need to go back in with a charcoal pencil and um, add some of that, add, add in some of those darkest tones. But it's better to do that later. So that you can save some of these darkest areas and use them sparingly. Although this 
this portrait in gen generally is one of the darker ones because there are a lot of dark tones. Now you can see me using a black colored pencil. I'm using it to shade the face and um, that's usually the finishing stage. Once I lay down the charcoal I go over it with a black colored pencil and the black colored pencil allows me to have more control when shading the face and also have more control of the type of texture that I'm producing so that I can imitate the appearance of the skin a little bit better but even though I call this the finishing stage when it comes to shading the or the final stage when it comes to shading the face it, this stage can last quite a while it can take sometimes even a couple of hours to do that but sometimes probably less this whole drawing took less than five hours I think because the charcoal is a little bit faster to work with one of the most frustrating things I found about graphite pencils, even though they have lots of uh, nice qualities and lots of advantages, one of the most frustrating things was the fact that uh, it's just so difficult to build up these darker tones, um, plus to make things work, to make to make these things worse, they are reflective and. Um, and uh, you can never really get dark darks. Now I did most of the shading on the face, but I'll be going back to it. But it's enough for now for me to move on to uh, the hair on the right. And he also has a weird braided goatee, so I'm going to get to that in a minute or two. But I'm just going to use a black color pencil to shade around, or rather draw around, these beads here. And the same thing with a goatee. And then when I lay down these darkest areas, I can just smudge or blend that charcoal and then go back in and add some more detail. One of the weird things when you're working with charcoal is that on the, the the portions of the drawing that you've already finished or mostly done look almost like a photo, while the others just look like a, like scribbling of a child. But that's the way it is with charcoal. That initial stage is always messy, and then. You work and you add details and you erase and draw highlights and uh, things just start to take shape and look a lot more realistic. But charcoal definitely isn't for everybody. I just uh, prefer dry media and Charcoal happens to be my favorite for now. And you also what you can notice is that I'm using two types of brushes. The blue ones are uh, the blue ones are stiff hard bristle brushes and this uh, yellow one is a soft synthetic brush and I use that softer brush when I need to shade lighter areas and spread the charcoal around gently and when I want to push the charcoal inside in, into the uh, texture of the paper and produce some of these darker tones then I, uh, then I use these stiff brushes So there are a few more medallions here on the left as well. And first I cover them with charcoal and then I uh, use 
erases to and charcoal pencils as, as well to define their shape a little bit more and pull some highlights because contrast will add to the realism of the drawing here and also these beads are shiny and have their own uh, patterns and textures as well Now I'm working on the goatee a little bit. And you can see that I'm using my bl uh, finger to blend here. So I'll use that tool as well. And it served me well. Here I decided the shade, the face needs a little more shading and the neck as well. Johnny Depp has very uh, prominent high cheekbones, but at one point I felt like I shaded the chin and the jaw a little bit too much, so I took off, took off a little bit of the value. I made the mustache a little bit darker. And I'm get, uh, again, I'm working with a black color pencil, adding some details and doing some of the finishing shading. Now, finally, I'm going to do something about the hair on the right because I need to uh, finish my drawing. I mean, you can just play with it forever, but sometimes you have to just put down the pencil and call it a day. Uh, some more braids here, and then some more details on these trinkets. And now I'm refining their shape. Using uh, mostly my eraser, but also totillions and pencils. I don't really know exactly what their shape is, but I'm just improvising a little bit. I can't see all of the detail in my reference, but I don't need to see it, it's not a big deal. I can just improvise and simplify a little bit. Uh, Johnny's face is going to be the focus of the drawing anyway, so it's not a big deal. And yes, I know I've already done a drawing of Jack Sparrow, but I will repeat myself occasionally. I never do the drawing of the same thing twice, but I do drawings of the same characters multiple times and if you've been following my channel you can see that I have a number of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean characters and I've also done drawings of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean characters before uh, even though I don't have uh, videos of that So there are some metal rings here and I'm just gonna go around them with a charcoal pencil and uh, refine their shape a little bit and then I can always go back to the pencil eraser and just 
pull some highlights, clean up their shape, make them look a little more shiny, and make them look a little more realistic. The contrast is key here, obviously. And now that thing looks like it's made of metal, which is what I wanted to achieve. The drawing is almost done. I'm just going to sign it using my eraser. I'm erasing my signature, which is M and SH in Cyrillic. And I'm just going to remove this tape and spray it with a fixative. So here the drawing was sprayed with a fixative. The charcoal is now fixed and it can't smudge. And I can always um, use my black colored pencil to go over it even though it's sprayed with a fixative. I can just add some more details on top. It's not a problem. I can refine some of the textures, fix some of the details and maybe just add some of these flyaway hairs like so. But now the drawing is done. And I'm just going <clears> to <throat> move it around a little bit so that you can see all of it because I'm not sure if the camera captures everything. And I'm going to also try to zoom in a little bit so that you can see more of the detail. There it is. I hope you liked this narrated video of Jack Sparrow. Thank you for watching.